Good morning, Gradates. I hope you're all having a terrific Tuesday. Welcome to the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences lesson. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. I'll be your online teacher today. My name is Mrs. Ernston and I'm the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. Remember to be prepared for this lesson. Um, you're going to need to take notes as we discuss things online today. The aim of the lesson is going to be looking at electrolysis of aqueous solutions. What I need you to understand is that electrolysis is the splitting apart of a compound into its elements using an electric current. We're looking particularly at electrolysis of aqueous solutions. The most important thing I would like you to learn this lesson is that the emphasis here is on demonstrating that a compound can be broken down into elements. You do not need to understand what is happening in the solution at an ionic level. So here we have a periodic table and I'm just highlighting the elements that we are going to be covering today. Copper, sulfur and oxygen. So I want to determine whether it is possible to decompose the compound copper sulfate, which we represent as CuSO4. So Cu stands for copper, SO4 stands for the compound sulfate. So, and it's made up of one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms. So copper sulfate is the compound we're going to be looking at today. I've got a little video that I'm going to show you and it will demonstrate this process. Your job is to watch really carefully what happens. Write down your observations, which is everything that you can see happening. So you definitely need to have your pen and paper ready. This diagram you will also find under our worksheets that have been uploaded for today's lesson. So you can go and download those so long, or you can just pause this video and you can copy down the diagram quickly. I think it will be really, really useful as a summary of the lesson. So the material and apparatus that we suggest here is not necessarily the only materials and apparatus that you can use for this lesson. Different teachers will use different apparatus and um, there are loads of YouTubes out there and they all do things that are slightly different. But at the end of the day, we generally get the, the same answers. So to carry out this experiment, you need a beaker, a cardboard disc large enough to cover the top of the beaker, two graphite electrodes here and here, two bits of wire or connecting wires. Here are our connecting wires here and here, and you need a nine volt battery. So the method that can be followed is you pour the copper sulfate solution into the beaker. So here is our beaker and here is our copper sulfate solution. Here is our cardboard. You need to make two small holes in the cardboard that you can push the graphite electrodes into. Then you're going to place the disc over the beaker so that the greater part of the electrode is actually below the surface here. We need the electrode underneath the water inside the solution. You're going to connect the tops of the electrodes to the end of a battery. And if you have a look at the diagram here, this is an experimental setup that you can follow. Um, or that you can show your teacher when you're back at school and you can try this experiment. Allow the reaction to proceed for a few minutes and observe what happens. But when the reaction is proceeded for approximately 10 minutes, it, the reaction should be complete, you can disconnect the wires and you can disassemble the apparatus. Now, just as a reminder going forward for some terms that we might mention later on, the electrode attached 
to the positive side of the battery is the positive electrode, and we call that the anode. And the electrode visit that's attached to the negative side of the battery is the negative electrode, and we call that the cathode. I need you to make the following observations before starting. So firstly, what color is the copper sulfate solution? And then I would like you to think about what is actually inside the beaker. So the beaker that's got the copper sulfate solution, what is actually inside that solution? And what color are the graphite electrodes? Then another thing that will be important is if you could copy down this table and you can fill the table as we go through the experiment, but the experiment is quite quick. So I will go through it step by step with you. You may pause the video now if you need to copy any information down and I will wait for you before we start the video. you to make the following observations before starting. What color is the copper sulfate solution? And if we have a look in the diagram here, it's blue. What is actually inside the beaker? Well, inside the solution, we obviously have water and we have copper sulfate. And what color are the graphite electrodes? They were a dark gray or black color. I also asked you to draw what is actually inside the beaker of copper sulfate solution. And you will find that we have water and we will have copper that will be chemically combined with sulfate. So those are the atoms that we will find inside the compounds inside this beaker. So after the reaction had proceeded for a few minutes, what do you observe on the surface of the two electrodes? Well, one electrode was turning brown, and we called that electrode the cathode. And the one electrode, the anode, began to be covered in small bubbles. So at the end of the experiment, what color was the copper sulfate solution? So here was the copper sulfate solution at the beginning of the experiment, and here was the copper sulfate solution at the end of the experiment. So the solution is still blue. Um, some of you may notice that the after solution is not as a bright, brilliant blue as the before solution. So, how did the appearance of the graphite electrodes change? Well, one electrode, the cathode, turned brown, and the other electrode, the anode, is still a dark grey. If we have a look at the table that I asked you to complete, the copper sulfate solution at the beginning of the experiment had an intense blue colour, but at the end of the experiment, the solution it was still blue but the color was not as intense. The anode or the one electrode had a dark gray surface and at the end of the experiment the dark gray surface it still had a dark gray surface but um, there were bubbles on the electrode. At the on the second electrode the cathode the surface was dark gray gray and at the end of the experiment it had a reddish brown coating on it. If we have to analyze and discuss this experiment, what gave the copper sulfate solution its intense blue color? Well, the copper sulfate that was dissolved in it. So we had water and we had copper and sulfate that was dissolved inside the beaker.
Do you think that some of the copper sulfate may have changed into something else during the reaction? Explain why you think so. So, the copper sulfate solution became less blue, which means the concentration of the copper sulfate solution was becoming weaker. So something was causing it to become slightly less blue. And what was happening is the copper ions were coming out of the solution as they accept the electrons and they became solid copper which precipitated as a reddish brown on the cathode. So you can see the red brown color here. How would you explain the bubbles on the surface of the first electrode? Do you have an idea of what they might have been? So the one thing is that bubbles mean that a gas is being formed on the surface of the electrode. So if we have a look at the electrode where we saw the formation of the bubbles, we definitely saw gas was forming. So we can guess by the chemicals that it may have been oxygen, but we would have had to carry out, we would have had to collect the gas and carry out the appropriate um, equation or the appropriate procedure to follow in order to test that gas. So do you know what the reddish brown coating on the second electrode is? So I have a hint for you. Which metal has that same characteristic reddy brown color? So it is possible that the reddish brown coating is copper. And again, we would need to test that. So in conclusion, you need to be able to write a conclusion for this investigation. So in your conclusion, you should rewrite the aim of the investigation into a statement about the findings of your investigation. So this was our original question or our, our statement. It is possible to decompose the compound copper sulfate, CuSO4, using electrical energy or something along the lines of the atoms in copper sulfate were rearranged to make different materials, copper, sulfate, ions, and oxygen. Do you think it would have been possible to separate the copper sulfate into copper and sulfur and oxygen by any of the physical separation methods that you learned about in grade seven matter and materials? So just to remind you, you would have looked at sieving, filtering, evaporation, distillation, or chromatography. So basically, here is a hint. Um, none of those methods are able to break the bonds between atoms in a substance. So our answer here is no. Copper and sulfur and oxygen are chemically bonded into a copper sulfate solution. So remember, copper, sulfur and oxygen are elements. So those atoms chemically combine to form copper sulfate that is a compound. And we know that the chemical formula for copper sulfate is CuSO4. So physical separation methods can only be used in mixtures. Let's just move this out the way. Into the substances they are made up of. And copper sulfate is not a mixture. It is a compound because it is made up of two or more different elements. So just to sum up, electrolysis of aqueous solutions, hopefully now you understand that electrolysis is the splitting apart of a compound into its elements using an electric current. We looked at electrolysis of an aqueous solution and hopefully you understood that I was trying to demonstrate that a compound can be broken down into its elements. Just a reminder, you do not need to understand what is happening in the solution at an ionic level. So in the summary of this lesson or to conclude this lesson, I think it would be a good idea if you can refer back to this diagram here and fill it in as much as possible so that you get a lovely diagram which summarizes that compounds can in actual fact be broken down into their elements. Remember, if you have any questions, you can email your questions to grade8 
at worksheetcloud.com. We look forward to hearing from you and we will respond to your questions as soon as we can. So happy Tuesday, Tuesday. Today, I hope you choose to be happy, choose to be kind, choose to be grateful, choose to smile, choose to be helpful, choose to be patient, and choose to be the best you that you can be. So thanks for watching us, Grade 8. The lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I hope you have a wonderful day.